friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Monday, June 6, 2022, and I'm here to do a little bit of a review on the Starlink RV version of their internet service. And the reason I stipify the RV version is that it is more expensive monthly, and apparently the speeds are slower, but the advantage is you can move it around, or at least that's the claim. I don't think you can move it around much at all, and the reason I say that is because it requires a pretty much clear view of the sky. What RV park has a clear view of the sky? Stop and think about it. They're almost all shaded. Yeah, unless you're going out to the desert or someplace. I went ahead and ordered the Starlink RV only because it was the only thing available. The, the regular Starlink, I've been on the waiting list for 15 months. They've got my $100 deposit and they still aren't delivering and still not predicting until later this year. Why the RV version is available, I don't know, but it is. And so I've been testing it since Thursday when it came in. Watch this video and you'll see my dilemma. Starlink Mobile just arrived. Here it is. It's a box about, oh, two feet long, 15 inches or so, 12, uh, maybe 16, 18 inches wide about a foot thick. So it's a pretty good sized box. Let's see what they give you for all this money we get charged. Undoing the tape, as you can tell, I haven't looked in here yet. And we do get a nice piece of white cardboard with an X on it. We get that. And we get a piece of blow molded plastic. Do we have anything else? Yeah, we do, we do, we do. Looks like we have a base, and it looks like we have Mr. Dishy right here, a big square kind of looking dish. A lot of cable attached. We've got our in-depth instructions. Can you see that, or is it whiting out the camera? Looks like another little piece of little molded plastic. We have our modem, and it looks like it's wireless only at this point. Just a lot of cable is the rest of that's in the box. That's it, I believe. I don't think there's anything else in the box. As we're outside, I'll show you how I've temporarily installed Starlink. The dish moves on its own. It was flat, pointed straight up. Now you can see where it's pointed. I set it out here in the middle of my driveway and put these things up around it so people won't come driving up the driveway and hit it. That's about the only place I have in the open near my shop, as you can see. Now, I could possibly put it up on top of the roof. It really needs a clear horizon all the way around. And as you can see here, we've got this tree, and we do have the building here on this side. So, you know, I think it's going to be okay, at least for testing. I've already done some preliminary tests, and the speeds are kind of moderate. We'll go inside now and take a look at the actual speed test and see what it looks like. Well, you can see my screen there, and I'll explain that in just a moment. Over there, if you look, you can see the uh, router. You know, that's the modem router, I guess you'd call it. That one there does not have the ability to direct hard wire into it without an adapter, so I'm going to have to buy the adapter. I may have to buy a pole mount for that so I can put it up high on the end of the building, you know, get it way up there in a free clear area. But even under the conditions we're working, you can see here, I think, on the screen uh, that it's working pretty well. 48 milliseconds ping, which is about what I was getting with T-Mobile also, so that's not impressive. The 34 down, uh, occasionally on the best moment I could get something about that speed down on T-Mobile, which was pretty good for T-Mobile, but it wasn't consistent. It would T-Mobile would drop down to you know five to 15. So five to 15 was probably my normal on my download. So 34 down on the first test is pretty good. On the upload test, 13, I've never got anywhere near that. If I could even get three up with T-Mobile, I was doing really good. So that's exponentially better. And that's what I need for the doing, doing the live shop talks. Let's run another one and let's just see if it holds true. I don't know, here we go. A 59 millisecond ping is not wonderful. It's not great, it's just okay. The download speed is 
pretty dang awesome. I'll take that. 49.9, that's basically 50. My upload speed, it dropped to 4.71, but even that, on the minimal, that's still better than I could ever really expect to get with the T-Mobile. So the 4.71, while it's not great, is passable. I'll just say that. Let me try it again. 39 ping, that's much better. The download is right now at about 17, dropping back down a little bit. See, 14 is kind of average with T-Mobile. That's kind of about what I used to get quite a bit. So that just dropped down to 13.9. Uh, the upload is dropping. Ah, darn it. Ah, darn it. It's down to 2.9. That's really not good. Back up to three. So three, even three is, if it, if it never goes below three, that's almost acceptable. It's still better than what I was getting on average with T-Mobile, that's for sure. But I wish it would just go back up. Doggone it. Yeah, it's just kind of typical of my luck that it's just never going to ever produce like it does for other folks, I don't think. That's looking real good. I like that. Back up to 25. I can live with that. Upload is dropping around 6. Stopped at 5.3. So that's, again, it's not horrible. It's just a little disappointing for what I was hoping to get. Definitely good enough to do a shop talk, at least, uh, assuming it stays like that. However, I have a feeling this is going to be so inconsistent for the time being that it may not be even good enough for a shop talk. I'm not so sure. It's going to be hard to, hard to say. And at least right now, on average, it's better than what I have. I moved the dish to a different spot out there, which was more secure in terms of not getting hit by cars and things. I just let it pick its own server there this time, and it picked the same one that Telecom always picks, which I think that may be because I have it set that way in speed test. I'll have to check that part out. But regardless, this is the server I typically use, which is in Sullivan, Missouri. Those results look pretty impressive. That's 51 milliseconds uh, ping, which is still not great. That's just kind of okay around here. Uh, but 69 down is awesome. I've never got anything near that. And then 8.6 up is perfectly fine right now. I would like to see that go higher, but that's really pretty good. I'll take that. Let's just try it once more and see what happens. Uh, 114 milliseconds. That's quite slow. And the download is quite slow. Wow, look at that. It's only three. That's worse than I was getting with T-Mobile. 7.9. That's about what I could have gotten with T-Mobile, but the upload is way better right now for some reason. Yeah, dashing your hopes. So 8.9 one on the up which is still pretty decent i mean these aren't great speeds but uh you know i can live with that well there's 48 milliseconds ping to sullivan the download looks real good that time see that's what's so weird it's so inconsistent 6.6 .6. that's pretty good i i mean i was hoping for more but Hopefully I can find a better location and do even better. Well, it's several days later, my friends, and it's kind of a soft, rainy day out here. I'm gonna show you the uh, antenna and how I affixed it to the building. But we're just gonna be out here for a second because the camera's gonna get rained on. We look back at the building, you can see the tower I put up here. It's a 50-foot tall tower, and I've got it guy-wired and that gives the dish the clearest view of the sky in the area that I need the dish in. Okay, it's Monday and we're going to do a, a speed test. Now it is raining out there, it's not storming, it's just nice rain, the kind of rain you wish you would always get. And so let's just see what kind of speeds we get today. The Starlink package arrived last Thursday, so we've had the weekend and everything, and I set up the pole uh, antenna yesterday morning, so it's been up for a full 24 hours, so it should be stable and have decided where all the satellites are by now. This is the first one I've done. I don't know myself. That's good latency, 38 milliseconds there on the ping. That's good. And the download speed looks awesome right now. That's the best I've seen, honestly. So, it, you know, it would on whenever I'm trying to show how slow it is. Of course, it just slowed back down, so that's 36.8, which isn't horrible. The upload speed, I wish it would stay stable like that. If it would stay stable like this, 
I'd have no problem with this at all. 38 milliseconds, 36.8 megabits per second download, 11.3 megabits per second upload. All of that is absolutely acceptable to me. I know that's very low compared to what most people see with Starlink. If it would stay consistent like that, I'd be happy. I don't think it will. Let's try another one. So those numbers there are basically acceptable too. This one's a little bit high, this ping being 69. Then we've got 50.9 and then 6.8, which is okay. It's still low compared to what most people are getting. Let's try it one more time just to give it a fair chance here. It's very inconsistent. When I'm trying to watch a movie with the T-Mobile as slow as it was, the movie's never buffered. With this, the movies buffer all the time and they drop in quality where they're going way down. I don't know why, since these numbers are higher t on average than what I get from T-Mobile. But with the T-Mobile, even though my numbers are much lower, the T-Mobile is far more consistent in terms of using it. Now, the upload speed on T-Mobile is not as good on average. That's for darn sure. And ne Well, none of the numbers are as good on average, but the T-Mobile seems to be much more consistent, at least in terms of like when I'm streaming movies or streaming video content off of YouTube. I don't know how to explain that. I'm just telling you because I got no reason to make it up. All right, one more test just to see where it's at right now. Now the ping came back, it's at 44, that's not bad. Anything under 50 is pretty good here as far as I'm concerned. But the download speed, look at that now. Look where it's at. Like I said, the consistency is not there. That's only 4.8. Typically my T-Mobile is around 10 or 12, so that's even worse than T-Mobile. Now look at the upload, it's not even one. So there you go, that's what I'm talking about. There's your inconsistency. Now let me switch my connection over to T-Mobile. Now the difference is the T-Mobile, I have it connected to this computer via Ethernet. To be fair, the Starlink was still connected via Wi-Fi. But this is connected via Ethernet back through another router and then back to the T-Mobile router. So I'm actually going through two routers with this where I was only going through the one router with Wi-Fi on the other. So I hope that makes sense to you. But anyway, let's check it and see how fast this is. And it's probably not going to be faster, it's just that it's more consistent. All right, so the ping is pretty good, it's 41. That's one of the better pings on T-Mobile. That typically isn't quite that good. Uh, the download speed is just about where it normally is, uh, you know, 11 or 12, there you go, so 12, that's pretty consistent. The upload speed, this is where T-Mobile is hurting me. I'm only getting like 1.5 roughly on my uploads, but it is fairly consistent. And there you go, 1.59. All right, so there's the first T-Mobile. It's not impressive at all, but it's fairly consistent. And because of that download, the movies don't buffer because it's fairly consistent at that. Now you might say, well, it's because it's raining outside and you're talking satellite. Well, it's raining outside and we still have to talk to the cell tower, uh, which is couple of miles from here. So here, and there's the ping, it's pretty good. It, it, for some reason the ping's even better than normal. So that's 39 and uh, 13 down, that's not too terribly bad. If this upload could just be a couple faster, I would never leave the T-Mobile. But this upload is what's killing me because it's only 1.45, somewhere in there. There's 1.4. So let's do one more with T-Mobile to give you an idea of the consistency. It's pretty consistent. Okay, the ping slowed down a little bit, but it's still not terrible, 5.1. The download is still above 10 right now, which is, you know, still consistent. Now, occasionally T-Mobile will have a download over 20, but it's rare. And there's the upload again. It's just a little bit better right now, but not much. I mean, it's still in the ballpark of the consistency anyway. So you can see my di dilemma. This is only $50 a month, and it's not much worse than the one that is $150 a month. It's just that this number, I'd be paying the extra $100 just to improve this number a little bit. And yet, it's not as consistent as this is. So it's really kind of a dilemma. So you can see, my friends, I am in quite a dilemma. I am a YouTube content creator. I do a lot of uploads. Upload speed is very important to me. I do my live shop talks every Friday morning. Upload speeds are very important to that. 
Do I pay the extra $100 a month to improve the upload speeds that much, basically? And they're not consistent on top of that? The Rosa curse, it has struck again. What would you do? Thanks for watching.